great meatloaf is always juicy, but it never falls apart. It is neither bland nor so heavily seasoned that it loses its meaty soul. A great meatloaf is, in fact, a lot like a great hamburger, only uh, turned inside out. Step one, oven set to 325 degrees. It all starts with six ounces by weight of garlic flavored croutons. Then we follow that with a half teaspoon of two peppers, both black and cayenne, right in on top of the croutons. A teaspoon of chili powder and uh, a teaspoon of dried thyme. Now just uh, spin this up until the croutons basically don't look like croutons anymore. There, that looks pretty good. One half of an onion, I've just kind of cut this up into quarters and it fell apart the rest of the way into the processor. One carrot, just peeled and snapped into pieces. And to tell you the truth, if you wash the carrots, you can skip the peeling part. Three cloves of garlic, no paper please. And about half of a red pepper, just torn into chunks. That looks about right. Now just uh, you get your finger underneath and hold the blade in. You can drop everything in at once. Now, the meat is the same breakdown as we used before. 18 ounces of each. One, two, nine, ten. Okay. That goes on top. Now, I'm also going to go ahead and add a little bit of salt. Not a whole lot because those croutons, I admit, I bought in a store. Okay, I'm a little lazy. They have a lot of sodium on there, but they're going to need just a little bit more because there's a lot of meat in here. So I'm going to put about a teaspoon and a half of salt right on top of the meat. I'm going to go ahead and mix this up before we add the final ingredient. It only takes one. If you put two eggs into a meatloaf, some really nasty things can happen. It's got to do with proteins and fats. Well, let's just say don't use more than one because one's enough. So one egg right into the middle. These are clean and they're perfectly usable. What you don't want to do is work the meatloaf like this. You don't want to squeeze it. That's just going to mess up the wonderful texture that we've got working in the meat. So just toss this. Time to pan up. Now, the loaf pan is not here for what you think. Just kind of pack this straight into the loaf pan. And once it's all in, just kind of push it out so that it fills the corners. This is strictly going to be a mold. There. Now just turn this out right in the middle of the pan, or as close to the middle as you can get, and it will come out like that. The most important thing about cooking meatloaf is temperature management. If this overcooks or it cooks too fast, you're going to get a grainy texture because all the little proteins are going to ball up and they'll just squeeze out all of the other ingredients. It'll crumble on the plate, very unsatisfying. So the best thing to do is to stick with a low oven and use a probe thermometer. Just insert the probe at a 45 degree angle right into the top of the loaf like that. You don't want to overshoot the middle of the loaf or you, you might hit the bottom of the pan and that will give you a false reading. So that's pretty secure. And this is going to go straight into that 325 degree oven. It's a relatively low oven. Now all you have to do is plug in your probe and wait till she chirps, the glaze. And it's pretty complicated, so you better hold on to your britches. All starts with a half cup of ketchup. Any brand will do. Now, the uh, sugar in the ketchup is going to help to, uh, to create the, the hardened surface of the glaze. You need a little bit of sugar for that. Otherwise, it's just going to be red frosting. Next, a tablespoon of uh, cumin. Hopefully, freshly toasted and ground would be best. Then you're going to toss in a shot of uh, Worcestershire sauce and a shot of your favorite hot sauce. There you go. And just to make sure that this really does become a glaze, something that's got a shiny crunch on the outside, I give a couple of squeezes of honey. Not a lot, don't want to overwhelm it with sweetness. Of course, oven opening is evil, as we all know, so work quickly. When it sets, this glaze will create a darned tasty crust. Crust being another thing you can't get if you use a loaf pan. Now, before you slice that up into luscious slabs and park it alongside mashed potatoes or, or build any incredibly high meatloaf sandwiches, which is what I intend to do, give this a rest. After all, it is meat, and it needs a few minutes just to kind of get its juices back together. 